and the deputy mayor for giving us this opportunity. We really appreciate it. Just a couple of nights ago, Wynton Marsalis was on this stage, and he's played here quite a bit. He loves this hall. And he said, this hall is not only a treasure for our city, it's a treasure for our nation. And he's right. Because who am I to argue with Wynton Marsalis? <laughs> so thanks again for coming. I'd like to introduce now the deputy mayor of the city of Troy, Seamus Donnelly. Good evening, everyone. Come on. <laughs> Thank you. This is Troy. Thank you, John, for that introduction. Thank you to you and your staff for tonight. Thank you, everyone that is here joining us at this national treasure here in our beautiful downtown Troy. Standing up here, I can only imagine the greats that have performed on this stage. Tonight is going to be about promises made and promises kept. It's also about a big vision. It's also about a big vision for our great city. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our mayor, Carmela Mantello. Wind and fire. <laughs> Thank you, Deputy Mayor Donnelly. Now let's give it up for our newly announced pro, Jada Robinson, to lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right here, folks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Jada's first time here. Woo. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the historic Troy Savings Bank Music Hall. Before I begin, I want to thank John, the staff, the ownership of the Music Hall for allowing me to give my first ever State of the City address from this national historic landmark. Thank you, John. Taking, this, taking the State of the City address out of City Hall and into the community is one example how we can work as one Troy moving forward. Just as the Troy Savings Bank Music Hall with its rich history and acoustic brilliance underwent a renaissance that rejuvenated its legacy as a beacon of cultural and musical excellence so too is the city of Troy in the midst of a revival. This transformation mirrors the hall's resurgence, symbolizing a broader renewal of the city's vitality and spirit. As the music hall emerged from periods of uncertainty to host the world-renowned performances once more, Troy has embraced our rich diversity while fostering innovation, becoming a vibrant community where history and modernity harmonize, reflecting the enduring resilience and rebirth of both the hall and the city. I want to thank my mom, my family, raise your hand. Where are you? Awesome. <laughs> 
I want to say hi to Paul and James out there, and uh, they're watching on Facebook Live. And Paulie, my other son, is where he should be at school, SUNY Albany. He had a class. Um, I want to thank all the elected officials who have joined us here tonight. Uh, Deputy Mayor Seamus Donnelly, again, thank you. You're doing an awesome job. Where's our county exec, Steve McLaughlin? Thank you so much, Steve. And do know, Steve is going to count the times I say infrastructure tonight. Um, Nick Joseph is here from Senator Jake Ashby's office. Thank you, Nick. Uh, Sheriff Kyle Borgol, where are you? Thank you. Kyle's doing an awesome job. Listen, it's hard to fill the shoes of Pat Russo, and Kyle's doing it, man. Thank you, Kyle. Dan Casal, one of our county legislators. Where are you, Dan? Thank you. Our city clerk, Maria Devonis, I see her. Thank you, Maria. Our downtown bid director, Olivia Clementi, and her board, where are you? Thank you. And now, hello to our awesome city council. City council members, council president, Sue Steele. Majority Leader Tom Casey, stand up, please. <laughs> District 1, Bill Keel, say hi, Bill. <laughs> District 2, Ryan Brosnan, thank you, Ryan. <laughs> District 3, Katie Spain McLaren, thank you, Katie. <laughs> District 4, Aaron Vera, Aaron, <laughs> you're in District 4 right now. District 5, Irene Soriento. Thank you, Irene. <clears throat> and thank you to all of you in attendance or watching online who have joined us this evening. When we took office less than two months ago, we committed to three goals. Making Troy safer, cleaner, and greener. These efforts aim to dramatically improve the quality of life for everyone who calls Troy, Troy home. Transforming our city into a place where people are eager to move into, not out of. Troy, the upstate city that bucks the trend, that demolishes the stereotypes, that proves our future is more golden than our gilded past. Together, as one Troy, we will realize this vision. You're going to get tired of hearing me say this, but the most important responsibility of the government is to keep our people, all of our people, safe. Every day, the memory of the senseless death of Aishan Davis reminds me of the work we have to do. Safety and quality of life are the bedrock of thriving communities, the key to attracting investment and a necessary condition for unlocking educational attainment. I promised in my inaugural address to create a safer future for all. We will work tirelessly to dismantle the systems that enable violence and drug trafficking, empowering communities and fostering a brighter future. This includes investing in our police and promoting better communication. I want to thank Chief DeWolf, if you could stand, Chief. I want to thank you for your leadership. And I want to thank our officers that are on the front lines to make our city safer every day. Thank you. I'm proud to call them a partner in this effort, and I know we will work together every day to make Troy the strongest community possible. To that end, we must ensure our police department is properly staffed. Just two weeks ago, I was proud to swear in eight new officers. This is one of the largest classes of new recruits that the Troy Police has had in years. I pledge that we will continue to invest in growing training and equipping our police force for the difficult challenges they face every day. However, in the end, no matter the number of officers or how well equipped, 
public sa safety also comes down to personal agency. People make choices. We will not tolerate an attitude of lawlessness. We will not look the other way. So I reiterate a promise I made in my inaugural address. We will make life hell for violent perpetrators and drug dealers who make the choice to victimize the people of Troy. <laughs> to follow through on this promise, we're taking a series of actions. First, I'm working with Chief DeWolf and his team to implement Task Force Sentinel, a specialized unit within the force to be deployed specifically to target hotspots of illegal activity. This dedicated team will employ advanced surveillance, technology, and intelligence-led police strategies to identify, disrupt, and arrest criminals operating within these areas, ensuring a safer environment for our community. In addition, we'll expand and improve the City Street Camera Program. This will assist us in addressing areas of persisting criminal activity. We'll also be enlisting the help of our residents, citizens, businesses by reinvigorating the Safe Cam Program. Finally, to improve our response times, we're collaborating with the county to implement a computer-aided dispatch program. I want to thank the county exec, his team, and the public safety team for your partnership on that effort. Thank you, Steve. <clears throat> Our EMS and fire service are also top priorities for my administration. Last year, the department answered 13,416 calls for service. Amazing, right? But this volume has showcased the strain on our staffing levels. To help immediately address our staffing issues, in the coming days, we'll be hiring nine new firefighters. In addition, we worked with the City Council on the purchasing of a new ambulance and a new fire pumper that will replace and upgrade our aging fire apparatus. But there is much more to do. The time has come for us to reevaluate the over 30 year city run ambulance model. As many folks know, an outside review of our ambulance model and staffing issues is underway. I'll continue working with Chief Salucci and our firefighters to explore ways to improve our emergency services. For years as council president, I fought for improvements at our aging firehouses, especially the need to replace Station 1 if you've been there in the Berg. Now as mayor, I'm proud to announce we are back on track for the building of a new firehouse on 2nd Avenue pending an environmental phase two site assessment. And finally, we must protect those who keep us safe. The deadly explosion of fentanyl on our streets endangers our EMS, our firefighters, and our police. Fentanyl is so potent that while rare, the DEA warns even accidental inhalation can cause overdose. Naloxone is the preferred antidote with the State Department of Health, but there are new FDA-approved opioid reversal agents specifically designed to combat fentanyl. Sadly, it's not uncommon for it to take four or five doses of naloxone to revive overdose victims and restore breathing. All that time, the individual's brain is deprived of oxygen. Another way to keep Troy safer is through improved coordination and deeper intelligence regarding drug trafficking. The involvement of street gangs in the retail level distribution of cocaine and heroin is increasing across upstate, including the capital region leading to deadly consequences. 
the federal high intensity drug trafficking area. A pronounced HIDA offers support to federal, state, and local agencies in areas identified as critical drug trafficking regions. Although Albany and Schenectady counties have already joined, we are not currently participating in this program. I'm supporting District Attorney Donnelly and Sheriff Fargo in the effort to add Rensselaer County to this program so we all might benefit from coordination and better intelligence. Last week, we also celebrated Black History Month. We honored Sam Moses. Sam was the first black officer to join the force. Sam was also friends with my dad, and they served together on the force. A lot has changed in Troy since my dad and Sam walked the beat. While I'm incredibly proud of the men and women who serve our community, we need to actively work to recruit more officers who reflect the population of our city. This is essential for building trust and ensuring all residents feel safe and represented by our police force. Therefore, I've directed Chief DeWolf, Troy Fire Chief Salucci, and our new Director of Diversity, Inclusion, and Outreach, Kevin Pryor, to develop new recruitment strategies and community outreach programs to attract more diverse, qualified candidates. I believe in the programs we currently utilize to get our officers out in the community, like Park Walk and Talk, Coffee with a Cop Initiative, and we'll continue to broaden these efforts. But there's much more to do. I believe police, body, and fleet cameras improve transparency, accountability, and trust between law enforcement and the community. These tools are essential for justice, promoting safer interactions, and fostering positive community relations. Over the coming months, all marked police vehicles will be equipped with cameras. They provide objective evidence in contentious incidents, protect our officers from false accusations, and promote professionalism. Today also, I'm announcing I'm joining Albany County Sheriff Apple and 26 other states and calling upon New York State to include the new opioid overdose reversal agents that I mentioned earlier to better protect our personnel. We need all the tools in the tool toolbox to combat the scourge of fentanyl. Now let's talk about quality of life issues. We hit the ground running since day one. Our Quality of Life Action Task Force has been tackling issues in our neighborhoods which people have been yearning for far too long. No more looking the other way. <clears throat> As I stated earlier, my top priority is keeping everyone safe, especially those in need most. The encampment near Prospect Park was both literally and figuratively a ticking time bomb. With propane gas tanks, weapons, drug paraphernalia, security cameras, and a makeshift latrine that posed a health hazard in and of themselves. Removing the encampment was necessary, not only to protect the community's quality of life for everyone, but also to address the immediate public safety and health concerns posed by the hazardous conditions at the site. Listen, I get it. Some folks might think we could have just ignored it. Others probably would have preferred we just looked the other way. But that's not what people elected us to do. Real leadership means doing things that aren't always popular. Real compassion means taking action for the long run not pretending problems don't exist. I want to thank Amy, her team from Joseph, Joseph's House for their continued partnership. They're doing an amazing job. Our task force is walking the walk, not just talking the talk. It's been a whirlwind of activity. This is just 
a small sample, a very small sample of what we have accomplished in less than two months. And trust me, we've only just begun. On day one, we began the process of overhauling our Code Enforcement Bureau. On day two, we discover what ultimately resulted in an emergency declaration to make immediate repairs to the long neglected 30 inch water man at the Eddy's Lane pump station. Let me paint a picture for folks. The failure of this main at the pump station would have been a real and possibly deadly disaster. The force behind the water pumped through the pipes would have not only wiped out the station, it would have caused extensive flooding to homes and businesses in portions of North Central and Lansingburg. It would have seriously damaged other parts of our water delivery system and left an estimated 100,000 people without water for weeks. That was just day two. On day three, we began updating the city's landlord and fire sprinkler registry, which hasn't been updated in years. On day five, we undertook the development of a residential occupancy permit program. Everyone deserves an adequate living environment. We expect to roll it out in the near future. On day seven, we began dismantling the much-hated traffic circle on Sauce and 15th, probably the most popular. <laughs> okay, probably the most popular thing I've done so far. <laughs> okay, on day nine, after inspecting more than 40 Red X buildings across the city that require major repair or demolition, We've identified 16 of these structures as posing imminent threats of collapse. We're prioritizing these buildings for immediate action to ensure public safety and mitigate potential hazards. On day 10, the first of the Red X buildings is demolished in our Little Italy neighborhood. Shout out to our full-time engineer, first time in 12 years, Russ Reeves. Give it up for Russ. On day 10, we took the decisive action to eliminate the growing unsafe homeless encampment in Prospect Park. On day 10 also, the much hated traffic circle is gone. <laughs> Let me tell you, day 10 was a hell of a day. Um, it's been like this mostly every day since taking office. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can't tell I'm passionate about this, I can guarantee you that we will provide top level services. My team and I are literally on the streets in your neighborhood day in and day out assessing needs. Our crews are out in their trucks picking up litter, raking, blowing leaves, sweeping sidewalks with brooms, and street sweeping. That's why we reopened the Alamo for winter service to date Many residents have taken advantage of this new program resulting in cleaner streets and alleyways. Let's give a huge shout out to Joe Mazzarello and his team. Please stand up. Our work crews are kicking butt on the streets. Additionally, folks are going to see a very aggressive pothole filling program, paving, crosswalk striping program. Stay tuned this spring and summer. But now, I need everyone else to pitch in. Please ensure your storefronts are clean and let's crack down on littering by expecting more from each other. Let's pitch in Troy. Say it again, let's pitch in Troy. Let's state the obvious. You can't have quality of life with toxic drinking water. It's a fact. In 2024, in Troy, New York, the Empire State, no parent should have to be afraid of what is coming out of their tap. No parent should lie awake at night worried that their baby's bath water is a toxic stew. 
We must repair and modernize our great city's infrastructure, and it starts with getting the lead out of the water. Troy has always been proud of our quality water and our water treatment facility. We can get that back. While it's ambitious, I have pledged to replace all lead water lines in our city over the next four years. Let's get this done as fast as possible. But to be successful, we'll need assistance from our state and federal partners. We know there will be a lot of money to compete for, and we'll need assistance in developing grant requests to win as much as those funds as possible. With that in mind, I've asked RPI President Marty Schmidt, who likes to be called Marty, to work with the city to develop an AI-based system to better access funding opportunities. This is the kind of project artificial intelligence is built to address, and I look forward to RPI's partnership. No one can argue that every citizen in Troy deserves access to clean, healthy water, right? Similarly, it baffles me that anyone would think we should be de denied quality health care. The planned closure of the Burdett Birthing Center by St. Peter's partner, Partners is unacceptable. And I, <laughs> and I've called on Governor Hochul to reject their plans as part of this year's state budget. This closure would disproportionately impact expecting mothers not just in Troy, but also in all of Rensselaer and Washington counties, especially hurting vulnerable populations who may not have access to alternative maternity services. I have a personal connection to Burdett. I gave birth to my son, Paulie, there. A robust healthcare system leads to better public health outcomes and enhances the overall quality of life for all our residents. Burdett positively impacts our economy by attracting skilled professionals and supporting community resilience during crises. To continue Troy's renaissance, we must maintain access to high quality healthcare services. I want to thank Assemblymember McDonald, who couldn't be with us tonight, Senator Ashby, and County Executive McLaughlin for their advocacy on this issue. And I reiterate my call for the Hochul administration to intercede in this wrong-headed plan. <laughs> Safer, cleaner, greener. These are the keys to improving our quality of life. To make Troy greener, we're supporting a series of important investments in our parks, pocket parks, and trails. The development of a new Knickerbocker Pool Recreation Complex is long overdue. This multi-million dollar investment will transform the park into a major asset for our community. In collaboration with the Knickerbocker Park trustees, this initiative will significantly benefit our bird community, especially our children, with construction expected to begin this year. In addition, we've worked with the City Council on exciting projects which are underway at Canal F Park, Beeman Park, and 112th Street Park, all scheduled for completion this spring. Recently, we invested to repair and renovate the golf course at Freer Park. The Park Pub Restaurant, a city-owned building located at the entrance of the spectacular Freer Park Golf Course, has not received adequate attention to its water, sewer, and electrical needs in years. We're addressing these issues and will then issue an RFP to attract a new restaurateur to manage the facility, making it a destination for people throughout the city and the region. Stay tuned.
While we've invested significantly in Freer Park and, fo and we're focused on our pocket, pocket parks, Prospect Park remains one of our city's national treasures. For over 120 years, the 80 acres of land conveyed by the Warren family have served as an anchor, offering commanding views of the city and the region. It's now time to look to the future of the park and we will initiate a new master plan to envision the next 20 years in Prospect Park. In the Little Italy neighborhood, we're supporting a project to restore the historic Hill Street Marketplace, revitalizing it into a community park, a meeting place with bocce courts and pickleball. Shout out to Sam Chapone, Heather, the Little Italy Quality of Life Committee. You guys rock. We look forward to working with you. And we can't leave the subject of open space without acknowledging the opportunity and the work being done to connect our incredible, amazing waterfront with the rest of the city. Our access to the Hudson River is unique in the capital region, and we'll need smart planning and investment to realize its potential, but we'll realize its potential. Stay tuned. Finally, as we focus on enhancing our open and green spaces, it's crucial that we invest in also attract private, private sector investment in our commercial, office, and residential sectors. Housing scarcity and rising costs have made affordability a major issue for many, a challenge that extends statewide. To foster growth, developing more housing is essential. To this end, we have submitted our letter of intent to participate in New York State Pro-Housing Communities Program. Participation in this program will benefit Troy by providing preferential scoring, aiding us in competing for certain discretionary funding grants. In addition to fostering new housing projects, supporting investment in existing housing is imperative. Utilizing ARPA funds and collaborating with TRIP, we aim to launch the Home and Property Investment Program. This initiative will provide grants for facade improvements and other home ownership enhancements, targeting improvements on a block-by-block -block basis. Talking about home ownership, it's evident that our city has been without true home for too long. Do you agree? Yeah. Our great city deserves a city hall that inspires pride in all of us. I'm thrilled to announce that an RFP for a permanent city hall will be issued in the coming weeks. One site, folks, that we'll, we will not consider for the new city hall is One Monument Square. It has become clear that the development once planned for this site faces insurmountable obstacles. We are in the process of developing a new vision for the site that draws on years of public engagement to design a sustainable and achievable plan and we look forward to unveiling that in the near future. Our future is bright, and we're committed to building a city equipped with the necessary infrastructure, green spaces, and housing to support new industries and foster continued growth. There are exciting opportunities ahead and private sector investors understand that our welcoming approach will unlock new possibilities. We must continue to nurture new and emerging industries, such as the video game development cluster right here in Troy. We have the opportunity to further cement Troy's status as a gaming hub by hosting the ECAC Sports Championship which attracts hundreds of gamers, right, gamers, from all across the country. 
with over 150 ECAC eSports member schools fielding more than 2,000 teams across 15 different games and divisions, the potential for growth is immense. By the way, I had a revelation. It's time to stop yelling at our kids for playing video games. <laughs> Who knows, they might go pro, just like Troy's own Jada Robinson, our junior Olympics boxing champ who's taken it to the pro level. Dreams do come true. As Troy's first woman mayor, I can tell you, dreams do come true. <laughs> I look forward to collaborating with the ECAC conference, RPI, and HVCC, along with Presidents Marty and Dr. Roger Ramsamy, our high schools, and most importantly, the video game developers to make this event a reality. Stay tuned. The future is here. There's a lot of building and investment on the horizon that will reshape the Troy we know, launching us to new heights the optimism, the hope, the expectation that the best is yet to come. I can feel it. I see it in City Hall where we start every day like it's on purpose, because it is. I see it traveling with our crews on the street. I see it with the cops on the beat, our firefighters in the house, and I see it when I walk the halls of City Hall. A new attitude, a better morale. Let's give it up for our city wor workforce. Please stand, please. Come on, come on. Woo! I know there's some guys in the back there that are very humble. And you know, by the way, I'd be remiss. Let's give it up to my gatekeeper who has to put up with me every, every day, Kitty Carly. Thank you, Kitty. As much as I can see it in City Hall, I feel it on the streets. I feel it in our neighborhoods. I can feel it in the post office and in church, at Stewart's, on the grocery lines, and in our neighborhood meetings. This feeling is palpable. It's the feeling of progress. The state of our city, folks, it's stronger and it's getting stronger every day. Thank you, God bless, God bless Troy, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you, folks, thank you, thank you.